what's up YouTube um, I wanted to talk about uh, uranium um, I've been following the uranium market since about 2012 2013 after Fukushima did some videos about it uh, in particular URG and uh, Cameco uh, Cameco and UR Energy um, wanted to just touch on a few things and uh, tell you what I think short term and uh, long term outlook is on this market uh, so I'm going to be all over the place this isn't scripted I'm not reading anything um, first off uh, I'm a hallway lawyer means I don't know shit uh, I'm just a man with an opinion just like you no different than you so what I say is just for entertainment purposes uh, only and not investment advice okay so there's uranium and why do I like uranium well I like uranium because uh, I noticed after Fukushima um, when Japan decided to turn down all their reactors China was uh, aggressively uh, talking about how they were going to expand uh, in their build out to nuclear reactors and I noticed that uh, uh, Japan was selling into the secondary market uh, and was bringing the price down and it really was uh, that filler that didn't incentivize um, companies to uh, mine for uranium and a lot of them uh, was just scratching by like you are energy and uh, they were getting contracts they were in pure survival mode and uh, they really weathered the storm and came out of this really strong they have a lot of assets as far as uh, different uh, mines and uh, whatnot so uh, I think they're a huge takeout target especially because they're in the US um, and I also think Denison's uh, a great target especially if they ha uh, can prove that they uh, this new drilling technique is a success plus they have uh, they've got cash um, I got 800 million shares outstanding whereas URG's only got it's under 200 million uh, but I think both of them are takeout targets uh, Denison's in Canada uh, I look at the the thesis uh, about the shortage this has been known for a while um, but the problem is uh, Kazakhstan back in the day uh, until uh, just recently uh, they were state-owned government-owned so they they didn't really care what the spot price was they were just producing you know and kept producing because the government wanted that money come in well that's not how it is now and they're kind of on board with the rest of the uranium companies like look get your the the spot price does the stop spot price does not justify us drilling and so they're in unison about that united and uh the screen movement you know which uh i think uh you know it's there's truth to it you know parts of it are true um but uh i think with this green movement uh and i've known this from the get-go this is not new news the cleanest energy in the world is nuclear it's got a huge upfront build of eight to ten years it usually comes in over budget and some 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 governments have uh, abandoned ship because of over uh over costs but uh the mine pays for itself I mean, not the mine, I'm sorry. The 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 energy company and its uh, nuclear site pays for itself and starts blowing by natural gas and coal and everybody else uh, about the 16th year. And, uh, and that's where it goes positive and, and farther and above those other uh, alternative energies. Um, the other thing I look at is uh, I was uh, a big solar and uh, wind turbine fan, but the last 10 years, 11 years, Germany has proven that they uh, that they fell on their face going this route because they've had such a shortage for energy that they have relied heavily on France, who smartly relies on nuclear in a big way. So does Canada. Um, they came out looking like roses you know what i mean so uh i think germany is proof that uh you know alternative energies clean energies such as wind solar and turbines 
are a great secondary energy but should never be counted on as the baseload energy and that's where nuclear comes in so I suspect uh, nuclear will blow up as far as uh, no pun intended uh, the spot price will blow up I think uh, I read these real conservative estimates it's almost a joke you know there's no uh, it's like uh, you ask somebody to write a report and they did a Google research uh, they're projecting uh, that uranium will trade at $65 a, a, a pound by the end of 2022 you can throw that out the window I think we're going to touch 80 to 90 uh, we might even go past 100 in this year alone with uh, you know uh, 8 months to go um, I think this is a, a 1 to 3 year market uh uh, peer growth. I also think that you know when you look at the numbers, just as stateside, on uh, historical average, they have two years worth of supply. They're at 16 years, but you got to really you know pull back the curtain. And what does that really mean? Well, as you know or should know, um, the uranium uh, producers they can't just flip the switch on an idle mine like uh, oil or natural gas. It takes you know six, twelve depending on the size of the mine, 18 months to get that mine ready to produce. So in the short term, when you look at the U.S. and they've only got 16th month of supply in their reserves and, and Europe's only got two years when they traditionally have three years, in the short term, that number is going to get more elevated and, and scary for their electric companies, uh, the energy companies, but you got to realize too, in about you know 12 to 18 months, uh, they're going to start. There's going to be production, and uh, uranium is going to come on the market to offset that. But it's going to take time, and I don't think that we'll be fully caught up, especially with the shortages of projections with all these um, nuclear reactors coming on through 2050, especially out of China. Uh, and that you got the UK and you got France wanting to roll out more and 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 then America and and, and China I mean America and uh, Germany they want to uh, you know refurbish what they already have to keep it going um, and who knows they'll probably add to it in about five years we might hear an announcement you know three years even but uh, the numbers work in your favor as an investor uh, in the short term. Um, as far as the general market and its impact, yes, I feel like we trade with the market. And we haven't really uh, deviated from the general market, but uh, I'm not too concerned about the, the 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 crash of the market as long as oil and commodities are trading uh, in a positive. Uh, if you look at the history of crashes, uh, they normally crash after the commodities crash. So. Where oil is at right now, at 107 a barrel, uh, today is May 1st, 2022, so um, I would be real nervous if it dropped and stayed under $96. That would tell me that it's time to get out and reassess and wait because the market's going to crash. But I don't see that happening. I think commodity markets are going to be really strong. I, I think uranium is the darling of the market, the one with the biggest uh, upward potential. <laughs> Natural gas uh, investors would uh, definitely disagree because they're they're just going off right now. But I think uh, all the commodities are doing well. Coal's even done super well, and uh, uranium's playing catch up. But I think it, at the finish line, it'll be it'll be uh, uranium that's victorious as far as the biggest uh, uh, bang for your buck. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other things that uh, I take into consideration. I, I'm really big on, uh, of course, I love CCJ, Cameco. Uh, they set the standard for others to follow. Um, but the ones I truly think are winning investments is, uh, I'll give you four. Well, I'll give you five. So I said Cameco, but I ran Cameco Fit because it's really big. You know, the bigger they are, they don't move quite as fast as, as as their peers if they're if they're the the, the elephant in the room you know what I mean uh, but they're gonna do very very well so I got them at fifth I got global atomic at fourth I um, I got uh, 
Denison Mines at three. Buyout target, definitely a buyout target. Number two, I get Energy Fields. Uh, and then number one, UR Energy, because I think they're definitely getting bought out. And uh, somebody's gonna pay a premium for them because they're, they're not that big, but they're, they're proven. And that, that's a big deal in this small market. They are proven. So they're my number one pick. Uh, but I think it's hard for me to project on where they're all going to end up. But uh, I, 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 Denison's just not as proven as energy feels. But I really think you are energy and Denison Mines are going to come out of this as, as uh, the, the, the brightest stars. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, here we go. So everybody's worried about, okay, China's locking up again. I don't really know what's going on there, and I'm not going to comment. It seems really superficial and, and odd to me. Uh, I think there's a lot of politics involved. I know they're trying to cover for their uh, property developers that defaulted and Evergrande. And, you know, they got a lot, a lot of issues. But they're, they're state-controlled, so that state controls the economy so they can they can dip in dip into the coffers and uh, i'm sure that they'll be okay and keep that you know behind the curtain for people but uh i think it's not a big deal that china uh is idle right now and maybe they're not buying because i wouldn't really worry about them and they're the number one market right the most nuclear reactor is going to be built in china i think the offshoot of of, of russia uh, you know, having uh, all these uh, sanctions on them. I think that the uranium will get sanctioned. I think the uranium produced in Ukraine and and uh, uh, Kazakhstan will be sanctioned because it's got Russia's fingerprints all over it. Well, I think what's going to happen is Russia, uh, as they survive with that economy, they're going to be selling to China and uh, India so that's where all that their uranium is going to go. So, but the, the the Western world, the people that need uranium, uh, they can't really count on anybody but Canada because uh, and uh, I really don't. Maybe Africa, maybe Nigeria, um, but you really can't look to the U.S. You really can't look to Australia. Australia has got more. Um, Restrictions in the United States. I mean, that, to me, that's mind-boggling. Whereas I see the U.S. making moves already. I see, uh, and this is all on Google, where the military is up there in Wyoming doing work uh, uh, for uh, testing of different nuclear capabilities um, and development for energy. Uh, I see that in uh, Arizona by Grand Canyon that. The judges approved uh, drilling, uh, not drilling, uh, mining for uranium. These are all things that are happening under the general noise of, you know, everybody is uh, on this nuclear renaissance. So you can see what's happening in the United States. You can see what's happening in Australia. You can see that how the Western world is really set up for failure. Japan's not selling to the secondary market anymore. Now they want to go nuclear. Uh, France wants to add, and they're they're making good money, and they're self-sufficient nuclear. So is Canada, uh, but a lot of these countries that are at their mercy, or were at Russia's mercy, and have to rely on their their counterparts in the Western world. Those are the they, that's the reason that the the spot price is going to go crazy, and it's going to go crazy. And like I said, when you compare it to its peers, like oil. And, and, and natural gas and coal and uh, solar and everything. You cannot just turn on production. You can't. Like I said, six to 18 months uh, of, of bringing an idle mine back in line. Now, a new mine? Oh my, how many years, right? Five years? I mean, you know what I'm saying? So I think this is going to be a great week. It's May 1st, 2022. I think the chemical is going to report on Wednesday. You got Denison, you got Energy Fields, you got all these uranium companies that are going to report. I think they position themselves very well. I think um, I think that the market that you could be looking at a 30 to 40 percent uh, upswing from the the destruction that happened over the last week and a half. Um, I think the spot price is going to be on the move again. Uh, 
towards the end of this week and I think uh, we're going to be on our next leg up. Um, a lot of people that don't know what the hell they're talking about, but you know, they want to comment on Twitter and, and, and these articles that talk about, well, Sprout didn't get their NYSE uh, listing approved, so that destroys the thesis. No, it doesn't. Let me tell you why. Because they can invest in S-R-U-U-F. They can invest in U-R-N-A. I mean, correction. U-R-N-M. You are not mine. Remember it like that. You are not mine. Those are both Sprout uh, uh, vehicles. The money is finding Sprout. $3 billion in, in, in not even, a, a, yeah, nine, eight months. That tells you all you need to know that these institutions that people are compl uh, saying that can't, they can't invest into it. The market's bigger. That's not true. They're finding it and they're positioning. And they've been positioning for a while now, okay? I'm, I don't think they positioned when the market crashed in 2020 um, because everything was cheap then. But I think they've been positioning ever since they realized that all these companies were added to the URA ETF and were protected from going under a dollar. Basically, that's what it is. Um, that's where your, your institutions have been positioning. And uh, I, man, I, I'll tell you what, uh, could could URG go from you know where it's currently at at 338 or whatever could it go to three dollars in the next two months yeah very much it could could it go to eight ten dollars uh early next year yes it could and as long as the market the general market does not crash and like i said all you got to do is follow oil if oil maintains over 96 and does not go below 96 and stay there for more than 24 hours don't worry about a crash. That's my opinion. That's the way I'm going to play it. You play it however you want to play it. But uh, I think commodities are the place to be. I think it's fool's gold to play with technology. I think it's fool's gold because they're set, the S&P, everything has been run up so far. You know, all you got to do is look at your Home Depots and your Microsoft and see where they were from 1990 to 2000 and then 2010. And then you look at what's been going on in the last three years alone and, and to see that they've, they've grown three times their size in just the last three or four years is tells you all you need to know that everything's overweighted and way above where it should be trading. So I don't think uh, if things like Netflix crash enough, you should really be chasing them because I think they've got farther to go. But again, this doesn't impact commodities as long as the market doesn't flush uh, on a crash due to a recession, which is on the table, um, and oil's going to tell you when that's going to happen, and it could happen, but I don't think it happens for a while. If it does, I think it's October through April of next year, but if it happens, get the hell out of everything and just be a, a spectator from the sidelines and wait wait up three, three to six weeks until everything settles down so you can ride the wave up on whatever it is that you're interested in. But in the short term, I love uranium. I think uranium's the darling. I think it's going to do very, very well. I think we need it. And I think uh, everybody's pro-nuclear pro now, you know, which is just a nice thing. You know, uh, the hit pieces that come out of a, can you believe American public's drinking water with uranium in it? Just stupid shit, you know, it, it just shit that doesn't make any sense. Like, well, I mean, there's, you know, there's uranium, uh, I mean, uh, whatever it is, and, and bananas. I mean, so who cares? You know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't eating 160 bananas, which is what it would take to kill you in a day. So, you know, who cares? That's my, my view. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching my video. It's been years since I talked about uranium, but I watch uranium every day. Um, I like uh, John's uh, Uranium Insider video. Shout out to him. I like John Quakes on Twitter. Uh, if you don't have time, most people don't. Follow those two just to keep your ear to the wall on what's going on. And then uh, what they bring up, you just research on Google. And uh, it'll add to the story and the thesis. And, and why I think, you know, things like, you know, the NY. SC listing is not a big deal because I only gave it a 15% chance anyway because you have to uh, 
you know, the way the, the commodity ETFs are set up on the NYSE, if somebody wants to sell out their position and they want the hard metal and they have 100,000 shares of a gold stock and they want actual physical gold, by SEC regulation of those guidance for the ETF, they have to send you that physical gold bill. You can't do that with uranium because it's a... It's a it's in its own type of market that's uh, very 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 highly restricted, and uh, no just anybody not just anybody can actually have ownership of uranium. So I thought it was a long shot. It's not a part of my my uh, thesis, uh, nor was the invasion of Ukraine part of my thesis. And uh, I I just think that all all the things that I just talked about should tell you uh, where this market's headed. It's been a long time coming. Um, it's been over a good decade, but it's here. And it's 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 like, you know, you see these pullbacks and it, it can be real gut-wrenching, but think of it like a, a tennis ball, okay? That's underwater. The farther you go under the water with that tennis ball, it, it's building up, it's building up that spring. Well, that's what's happening when the, the pullback's happening in the radium market. The tension's there, and once it's released, it's just going to fly. And, and I'm telling you, it's no different than 04 to 06. And if you look at that chart, um, that that huge spike to $145 a pound, that didn't happen overnight. That whole, happened over months. But I feel like we got another one coming until more uranium producers come back online, which, I, again, I don't think that's a realistic expectation, at least for another 12 months. Tell me what you think. I hope you enjoyed my video. I enjoyed talking about uranium. I love uranium. I think it's the most important asset in the earth. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Later.